Super Smash Brothers is a series that needs no introduction. With every new entry in the series quickly becoming the best-selling game on its console, it's become one of the most beloved franchises in the history of gaming. However, with a player base this large, people were bound to stretch the game to its limits and figure out the most effective way for beating their opponents. What originally was envisioned as a casual party game for everyone suddenly turned into a competitive fighting game juggernaut. This rise of the competitive scene can largely be attributed to the second game of the series, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Unlike its previous entry, Super Smash Bros. Melee was much faster and turned characters from a polygonal mess into a crisp and refined looking experience. Along with a fancy new look came big gameplay changes. Moves of characters had faster animations and less ending time. Combining that with faster character speeds and smaller stages meant that it was possible to quickly follow up on attacks and create flashy, well-executed combos. The competitive community was even able to find hidden techniques by exploiting the game's mechanics, making the game more refined and difficult to master. Wave dashing, for instance, is when a character uses the momentum carried from an air dodge to slide along the ground and traverse the stage very quickly. This was a mechanic that even the developer himself didn't know about, but it has since become a staple of competitive play. However, this competitive community wasn't even safe from its own creator, Masahiro Sakurai. He hated the way his games were being played by the community, and even tried to get the game banned from the largest fighting game tournament in the world, EVO, the Evolution Championship Series. This culminated in the next game being released, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, to be a much slower game that was aimed more at the casual gaming market. Much to Sakurai's chagrin, the game was played competitively anyways. However, Super Smash Bros. Melee still remained the competitive fighting game juggernaut. By the release of Smash for Wii U and 3DS, Sakurai finally gave in and actively started supporting the competitive community. And there was no better time for this, as the console generation for the fourth Smash game allowed for game updates. This meant characters who were considered to be bad or overpowered could be changed to help better balance the game. Sakurai was even able to put in new characters to the game through this method as well. With the rise of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it seems that Sakurai is doing everything he can to help support the game's fans and keep the competitive community alive. Luckily, we were able to talk to some of the fans and ask them why they play this game competitively. So I first started playing the Super Smash Bros. series actually when I was probably around, I'd say maybe eight or so, and I actually originally only played it at a friend's house. I never owned a GameCube or anything, and uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee was the first one that I had actually ever heard about. And so I went over to my friend's house, and he introduced me to the game, and I was immediately hooked. Every single day I would go over to my friend's house and play Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, and I would just completely ignore him, which was kind of a, a terrible thing to do to my friend. Um, but looking back on it, I probably would not have such a strong bond with the game if I didn't get so much time playing it over at my friend's house. When I first got into the competitive side of Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, I was met with really warm welcomes, and I made a lot of friends here. Um, in fact, I'd say Asheville is one of the best communities in North Carolina for uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's really nice. Uh, I've gotten to know like Greensboro, uh, the Triangle area scene, where uh, there's Raleigh, Cary, and Durham and all that, and I'd still say Asheville is like the best Asheville. <laughs> As far as uh, Super Smash Bros. has influenced the fighting game community, um, it was in a really weird position. Um, even now, I still feel like it kind of is compared to like the Street Fighter, Marvel communities and all that. We're always seen as like that one fighting game that's, oh, play a real fighting game sort of thing. But we've had Evos since um, mid to late um, 2000s and like, it, it's still a running gag and all that, that we're not a real fighting game, but we've definitely made our mark. Um, and we have enormous viewership every year coming into Evo. Every situation in Melee can evolve. So if there's two characters on screen in a certain position, then each player has to keep in mind what options their opponent has. And as these options change, as players discover new options, the, uh, the counters to those options also change, which creates more dynamic gameplay. So 
As an example, if I am playing Peach against Fox on Battlefield, and Peach is underneath the side platform, and I see Fox running at me, I think he's probably going to neutral air. So that's the level one, is Fox does a neutral air. And then he hits me and I get comboed. But what I can keep in mind is that if I crouch, then I won't get knocked down, and then I can down smash the Fox after he does the neutral air. Then what the Fox can do after that is realize that he can do a down air and I can't crouch cancel it. So the Fox then down air and does a shine and combos me off of that. Then the next step would be that Peach does a wave dash back and down smashes. Then the next step would be that Fox does an overshoot down air. As you can see, these options just keep going and going and there's no end.